generators and in the generators tab you want to click color solid and we're going to make this color solid white so go up to the inspector tab and click the color bar and choose white at this point i'm going to go into the properties tab on the side and mess with the scale until i like the size that it is so i kind of had it at 19 percent scale and then I went and found pictures. Now, if you want to do this effect, most likely you have pictures you want to use, but I just found some for the purpose of this tutorial. Then I brought in those pictures and adjusted the scale to fit the color salt that we have in the back. And because all the pictures were sized differently, I went in to the color solid and changed those parameters individually. Next, I'm going to go and close that group that we made and duplicate it. And I'm going to duplicate this about like 15 times till I get as many pictures in as I want and I fill up pretty much the whole page or at least the parts that you're going to see. And then in each of those groups I just changed the picture and adjusted the solids in the background. So now we have our collage and in our collage I'm just going to drag them all into one big group so that it's easier to adjust later. Now I'm going to go and add a camera from that plus button and we're going to change the layers to 3D. And in this camera, I want to look at the perspective so that we can easily tell how the camera is going to look by looking at the active camera viewer that's in the bottom right corner. So now I'm going to go and click that red recording button so that we can start changing the camera values. So first we start out with a wide shot and then we're going to zoom in by pressing that scale button on the HUD that we have opened. And then once we have that first keyframe, basically, we're going to go and select it and we're going to ease it in, which will make the movement a little bit smoother. Now move your playhead a few frames from when your last camera movement was and add keyframes at position and scale. This will allow you to keep your camera in the same spot for a few frames before switching to the next location. Then I'm going to move my playhead just a little bit forward and go into the go into the perspective camera and move that camera apparatus up to the top or to wherever you want your camera to go. And this creates the animation as you see where the camera starts at our starting position, moves in, stays at the picture for a few frames and then moves up. And then we're going to repeat this process where we add the keyframes at position and scale so it will stay at that picture for a few frames and then we're going to move that camera apparatus once again. And I find that perspective view is the easiest to do this in, but you can do this in whatever view you want to. So then we're going to go back into that keyframe viewer and we're going to select all those points and ease them in. And it'll just give it kind of a, a cleaner movement, which is what we want. And now we're going to go back into another parameter and add the wiggle. So in that behaviors tab, that's where you find it. And then we're going to change the amount to about 47 and just play around with the parameters there. And this is kind of to give it a handheld movement. And we're going to go and change the properties to affect X and Y down in that apply to category. So once we have that, that is all we're going to do in motion. And we're going to bring the rest into Final Cut Pro. So I brought in some light leaks and some particles that I downloaded from footagecrate.com and they are all free so you can go and check them out there. And for all of those I changed the blend mode to screen and that just got rid of the black background that you'll have and that is the effect. So I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.